part one of antigone this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by expatriate in bangor maine antigone by sophocles translated by edward hayes plumtree eighteen twenty one to eighteen ninety one part one dramatis personae creon king of thebes haemon son of creon teresius a seer guard first messenger second messenger eurydice wife of creon antigone and ismene daughters of oedipus chorus of theban elders argument after the death of oedipus antigone and ismene returned to thebes and lived in the king's house with eteocles their brother but the seven great captains from argos whom polynices had called to help him came against thebes to destroy it and were hardly driven back and the two brothers having died by each other's hands the people of the city made creon their king as being wise and prudent and next of kin to the dead and he issued his decree that eteocles should be buried with due honour but that no man should dare to bury polynices who had come purposing to lay waste the city and all the temples of the gods antigone scene thebes in front of the palace early morning hills in the distance on the left on the right the city enter antigone and ismene antigone ismene mine own sister darling one is there of ills that sprang from oedipus one left that zeus will fail to bring on us the two who yet remain naught is there sad naught full of sorrow steeped in sin or shame but i have seen it in thy woes and mine and now what new decree is this they tell our captain has enjoined on all the state knowst thou hast heard or are they hid from thee the ills that come from foes upon our friends ismene no tidings of our friends antigone pleasant or painful since that hour have come when we two sisters lost our brothers twain in one day dying by a twofold blow and since in this last night the argive host has left the field i nothing further know nor brightening fortune nor increasing gloom antigone that knew i well and therefore sent for thee beyond the gates that thou mayst hear alone ismene what meanest thou it is but all too clear thou broodest darkly o'er some tale of woe antigone and dost not creon treat our brothers twain one with the rites of burial one with shame eteocles so say they he interred fitly with wonted rites as one held meet to pass with honour to the dead below but for the corpse of polynices slain so piteously they say he has proclaimed to all the citizens that none should give his body burial or bewail his fate but leave it still unwept unsepulchred a prize full rich for birds that sent afar their sweet repast so creon bids they say creon the good commanding thee and me yes me i say and now is coming here to make it clear to those who know it not and counts the matter not a trivial thing but whoso does the things that he forbids for him there waits within the city walls the death of stoning thus then stands thy case and quickly thou wilt show if thou art born of noble nature or degenerate livest base child of honoured parents ismene how could i o oh, daring in thy mood in this our plight or breaking law or keeping aught avail antigone wilt thou with me share risk and toil look to it ismene what risk is this what purpose fills thy mind antigone wilt thou help this my hand to lift the dead ismene meanst thou to bury him when law forbids antigone he is my brother yes and thine though thou wouldst fain he were not i desert him not ismene o daring one when creon bids thee not antigone he has no right to keep me from mine own ismene 
ah me remember sister how our sire perished with hate o'erwhelmed and infamy from evils that himself did bring to light with his own hand himself of eyes bereaving and how his wife and mother both in one with twisted cordage cast away her life and thirdly how our brothers in one day in suicidal conflict wrought the doom each of the other and we twain are left and think how much more wretchedly than all we twain shall perish if against the law we brave our sovereign's edict and his power this first we need remember we were born women as such not made to strive with men and next that they who reign surpass in strength and we must bow to this and worse than this i then entreating those that dwell below to judge me leniently as forced to yield will hearken to our rulers over a zeal that still will meddle little wisdom shows antigone i will not ask thee nor though thou shouldst wish to do it shouldst thou join with my consent do what thou wilt i go to bury him and good it were in doing this to die loved i shall be with him whom i have loved guilty of holiest crime more time is mine in which to share the favour of the dead than that of those who live for i shall rest for ever there but thou if thus thou please count as dishonoured what the gods approve ismene i do them no dishonour but i find myself too weak to war against the state antigone make what excuse thou wilt i go to rear a grave above the brother whom i love ismene ah wretched me how much i fear for thee antigone fear not for me thine own fate raise safety ismene at any rate disclose this deed to none keep it close hidden i will hide it too antigone speak out i bid thee silent thou wilt be more hateful to me if thou fail to tell my deed to all men ismene fiery is thy mood although thy deeds the very blood might chill antigone i know i please the souls i ought to please ismene yes if thou canst thou seek'st the impossible antigone when strength shall fail me then i'll cease to strive ismene we should not hunt the impossible at all antigone if thou speak thus my hatred wilt thou gain and rightly wilt be hated of the dead leave me and my ill counsel to endure this dreadful doom i shall not suffer aught so evil as a death dishonourable ismene go then if so thou wilt of this be sure wild as thou art thy friends must love thee still exeunt enter chorus of theban elders strophe one chorus o light of yon bright sun fairest of all that ever shone on thebes thebes with her seven high gates thou didst appear that day eye of the golden dawn or Durkis streams advancing driving with quickened curb in haste of headlong flight the warrior who in panoply of proof from argos came with shield of glittering white whom polynices brought roused by the strife of tongues against our fatherland as eagle shrieking shrill he hovered o'er our land with snow-white wing bedecked begirt with myriad arms and flowing horsehair crests antistrophe i he stood above our towers encircling with his spears all blood bestained the portals of our gates he went before he filled his jaw with blood of men ere the pine-fed hephaestus had seized our crown of towers so loud the battle din that ares loves was raised around his rear a conflict hard e'en for his dragon foe for breath of haughty speech zeus hateth evermore and seeing them advance with mighty rushing stream and clang of golden arms with brandished fire he hurls one who rushed eagerly from topmost battlement to shout out victory strophe two crashing to earth he fell down smitten with his torch who came with madman's haste drunken with frenzied soul and swept o'er us with blasts the whirlwind blasts of hate thus on one side they fare and ares great like war-horse in his strength smiting now here now there brought each his several fate 
for seven chief warriors at the seven gates met equals with equals matched to zeus the lord of war left tribute arms of bronze all but the hateful ones who from one father and one mother sprung stood wielding hand to hand their two victorious spears and had their doom of death as common lot antistrophe two but now since victory of mightiest name hath come to thebes of chariots proud joying and giving joy after these wars just past learn ye forgetfulness and all night long with dance and voice of hymns let us go round in state to all the shrines of gods while bacchus making thebes resound with dance begins the strain of joy but lo our country's king creon menachius's son new ruler by new change and providence of god comes to us steering on some new device for lo he hath convened by herald's loud command this council of the elders of our land enter creon creon my friends for what concerns our commonwealth the gods who vexed it with the billowing storms have righted it again and i have sent by special summons calling you to come apart from all the others this in part as knowing ye did all along uphold the might of laius throne in part again because when oedipus our country ruled and when he perished then towards his sons ye still were faithful in your steadfast mind and since they fell as by a double death both on the self-same day with murderous blow smiting and being smitten now i hold their thrones and all their power of sovereignty by nearness of my kindred to the dead and hard it is to learn what each man is in heart and mind and judgment till he gain experience in princedom and in laws for me who e'er is called to guide a state and does not catch at counsels wise and good but holds his peace through any fear of man i deem him basest of all men that are and so have deemed long since and whosoe'er as worthier than his country counts his friend i utterly despise him i myself zeus be my witness who beholdeth all would not keep silence seeing danger come instead of safety to my subjects true nor could i take as friend my country's foe for this i know that there our safety lies and sailing while the good ship holds her course we gather friends around us by these rules and such as these do i maintain the state and now i come with edicts close allied to these in spirit for my citizens concerning those two sons of oedipus ateocles who died in deeds of might illustrious fighting for our fatherland to honour him with sepulture all rites duly performed that to the noblest dead of right belong not so his brother him i speak of polynices who returned from exile sought with fire to desolate his father's city and the shrines of gods yes sought to glut his rage with blood of men and lead them captives to the bond slave's doom him i decree that none shall dare entomb that none shall utter wail or loud lament but leave his corpse unburied by the dogs and vultures mangled foul to look upon such is my purpose ne'er if i can help shall the vile have more honour than the just but whoso shows himself my country's friend living or dead from me shall honour gain chorus this is thy pleasure o menichaeus's son for him who hated him who loved our state and thou hast power to make what laws thou wilt both for the dead and all of us who live creon be ye then guardians of the things i speak chorus commit this task to one of younger years creon nay watchmen are appointed for the corpse chorus what other task then dost thou lay on us creon not to consent with those that disobey chorus none are so foolish as to seek for death creon yet that shall be the doom but love of gain hath oft with false hopes lured men to their death enter guard guard i will not say o king that i have come panting with speed and plying nimble feet for i had many halting points of thought backwards and forwards turning round and round for now my mind would give me sage advice poor wretch why go where thou must bear the blame or wilt thou tarry fool 
shall creon know these things from others how wilt thou scape grief revolving thus i came in haste yet slow and thus a short way finds itself prolonged but last of all to come to thee prevailed and though i tell of naught yet i will speak for this one hope i cling to might and main that i shall suffer naught but destiny creon what is it then that causes such dismay guard first for mine own share in it this i say the deed i did not do not know who did nor should i rightly come to ill for it creon thou feel'st thy way and fencest up thy deed all round and round twould seem thou hast some news guard yea news of fear engenders long delay creon wilt thou not speak and then depart in peace guard well speak i will the corpse some one has been but now and buried it a little dust o'er the skin scattering with the wonted rites creon what sayst thou what man dared this deed of guilt guard i know not neither was there stroke of axe nor earth cast up by mattock all the soil was dry and hard no track of chariot wheel but he who did it went and left no sign and when the first day watchman showed it us the sight caused wonder and sore grief to all for he had disappeared no tomb indeed was over him but dust all lightly strown as by some hand that shunned defiling guilt and no sign was there of wild beast or dog having come and torn him evil words arose among us guard to guard imputing blame which might have come to blows and none was there to check its course for each to each appeared the man whose hand had done it yet not one had brought it home but each disclaimed all knowledge and we were ready in our hands to take bars of hot iron and to walk through fire and call the gods to witness none of us were privy to his schemes who planned the deed nor his who wrought it then at last when naught was gained by all our searching some one speaks who made us bend our gaze upon the ground in fear and trembling for we neither saw how to oppose it nor accepting it how we might prosper in it and his speech was this that all our tales should go to thee not hushed up anywise this gained the day and me ill starred the lot condemns to win this precious prize so here i come to thee against my will and surely do i trow thou dost not wish to see me still tis true that no man loves the messenger of ill chorus for me my prince my mind some time has thought if this perchance has some divine intent creon cease then before thou fillest me with wrath lest thou be found though full of years a fool for what thou sayst is most intolerable that for this corpse the providence of gods has any care what have they buried him as to their patron paying honours high who came to waste their columned shrines with fire to desecrate their offerings and their lands and all their wonted customs dost thou see the gods approving men of evil deeds it is not so but men of rebel mood lifting their head in secret long ago still murmured thus against me never yet had they their neck beneath the yoke content to bear it with submission they i know have bribed these men to let the deed be done no thing in use by man for power of ill can equal money this lays cities low this drives men forth from quiet dwelling-place this warps and changes minds of worthiest stamp to turn to deeds of baseness teaching men all shifts of cunning and to know the guilt of every impious deed but they who hired have wrought this crime have laboured to their cost or soon or late to pay the penalty but if zeus still claims any awe from me know this and with an oath i tell it thee unless ye find the very man whose hand has wrought this burial and before mine eyes present him captive death shall not suffice till first hung up still living ye shall show the story of this outrage that henceforth knowing what gain is lawful ye may grasp at that and learn it is not meet to love gain from all quarters by base profit one you will see more destroyed than prospering guard may i then speak or shall i turn and go creon cease not even yet how vexing are thy words guard 
is it thine ears they trouble or thy soul creon why dost thou gauge my trouble where it is guard the doer grieves thy heart but i thine ears creon pshaw what a babbler born to prate art thou guard may be yet i this deed at least did not creon yes and for money selling e'en thy soul guard ah me how dire it is in thinking false to think creon prate about thinking but unless ye show to me the doers ye shall say ere long that scoundrel gain still work their punishment exit guard god send we find him should we find him not as well may be for this must chance decide you will not see me coming here again for now being safe beyond all hope of mine beyond all thought i owe the gods much thanks exit strophe one chorus many the forms of life wondrous and strange to see but naught than man appears more wondrous and more strange he with the wintry gales o'er the white foaming sea mid wild waves surging round wendeth his way across earth of all gods from ancient days the first unworn and undecayed he with his ploughs that travel o'er and o'er furrowing with horse and mule wears ever year by year antistrophe one the thoughtless tribe of birds the beasts that roam the fields the brood in sea depths born he takes them all in nets knotted in snaring mesh man wonderful in skill and by his subtle arts he holds in sway the beasts that roam the fields or tread the mountain's height and brings the binding yoke upon the neck of horse with shaggy mane or bull on mountain crest untamable in strength strophe two and speech and thought as swift as wind and tempered mood for higher life of states these he has learnt and how to flee or the clear cold of frost unkind or darts of storm and shower man all providing unprovided he meeteth no chance the coming days may bring only from hades still he fails to find escape though skill of art may teach him how to flee from depths of fell disease incurable antistrophe two so gifted with a wondrous might above all fancy's dreams with skill to plan now unto evil now to good he turns while holding fast the laws his country's sacred rights that rest upon the oath of gods on high high in the state and outlaw from the state when loving in his pride the thing that is not good ne'er may he share my hearth nor yet my thoughts who worketh deeds of evil like to this enter guards bringing in antigone as to this portent which the gods have sent i stand in doubt can i who know her say that this is not the maid antigone o oh, wretched one of wretched father born thou child of oedipus what means this surely tis not that they bring thee as a rebel gainst the king's decree and taken in the folly of thine act guard yes she it was by whom the deed was done we found her burying where is creon pray chorus back from his palace comes he just in time enter creon creon what chance is this with which my coming fits guard men o oh my king should pledge themselves to naught for cool reflection makes their purpose void i surely thought i should be slow to come here cowed by thy threats which then fell thick on me but now persuaded by the sweet delight which comes unlooked for and beyond our hopes i come although i swore the contrary bringing this maiden whom in act we found decking the grave no need for lots was now the prize was mine and not another man's and now o king take her and as thou wilt judge and convict her i can claim a right to wash my hands of all this troublous coil creon how and where was it that ye seized and brought her guard she was in act of burying thou knowest all creon dost know and rightly speak the tale thou tellest guard i saw her burying that selfsame corpse thou badest us not to bury speak i clear creon how was she seen and taken in the act guard the matter passed as follows when we came with all those dreadful threats of thine upon us 
sweeping away the dust which lightly spread covered the corpse and laying stripped and bare the tainted carcass on the hill we sat to windward shunning the infected air each stirring up his fellow with strong words if any shirked his duty this went on some time until the glowing orb of day stood in mid-heaven and the scorching heat fell on us then a sudden whirlwind rose a scourge from heaven raising squalls on earth and filled the plain the leafage stripping bare of all the forest and the air's vast space was thick and troubled and we closed our eyes until the plague the gods had sent was past and when it ceased a weary time being gone the girl is seen and with a bitter cry shrill as a bird's when it beholds its nest all emptied of its infant brood she wails thus she when she beholds the corpse all stripped groaned loud with many moanings and she called fierce curses down on those who did the deed and in her hand she brings some fine dry dust and from a vase of bronze well wrought upraised she pours the three libations o'er the dead and we beholding give her chase forthwith and run her down not terrified at us and then we charged her with a former deed as well as this and nothing she denied but this to me both bitter is and sweet for to escape one's self from ill is sweet but to bring friends to trouble this is hard and painful yet my nature bids me count above all these things safety for myself creon to antigone thou then yes thou who bends thy face to earth confessest thou or dost deny the deed antigone i own i did it and will not deny creon to guard go thy way where'er thy will may choose freed from a weighty charge exit guard end of part one recording by expatriate in bangor maine part two of antigone by sophocles translated by edward hayes plumtree eighteen twenty one to eighteen ninety one this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by expatriate in bangor maine part two creon to antigone and now for thee say in few words not lengthening out thy speech knewst thou the edicts which forbade these things antigone i knew them could i fail full clear were they creon and thou didst dare to disobey these laws antigone yes for it was not zeus who gave them forth nor justice dwelling with the gods below who traced these laws for all the sons of men nor did i deem thy edict strong enough that thou a mortal man shouldst overpass the unwritten laws of god that know not change they are not of to-day nor yesterday but live for ever nor can man assign when first they sprang to being not through fear of any man's resolve was i prepared before the gods to bear the penalty of sinning against these that i should die i knew how should i not though thy decree had never spoken and before my time if i shall die i reckon this again for whoso lives as i in many woes how can it be but he shall gain by death and so for me to bear this doom of thine has nothing painful but if i had left my mother's son unburied on his death in that i should have suffered but in this i suffer not and should i seem to thee to do a foolish deed tis simply this i bear the charge of folly from a fool chorus the maiden's stubborn will of stubborn sire the offspring shows itself she knows not yet to yield to evils creon know then minds too stiff most often stumble and the rigid steel baked in the furnace made exceeding hard thou seest most often split and shivered lie and i have known the steeds of fiery mood with a small curb subdued it is not meet that one who lives in bondage to his neighbour should think too proudly wanton outrage then this girl first learnt transgressing these my laws but this when she has done it is again a second outrage over it to boast and laugh as having done it surely then she is the man not i if all unscathed such deeds of might are hers but be she child of mine own sister or of one more near than all the kith and kin of household zeus 
she and her sister shall not scape a doom most foul and shameful for i charge her too with having planned this deed of sepulture go ye and call her twas but now within i saw her raving losing self-command and still the mind of those who in the dark plan deeds of evil is the first to fail and so convicts itself of secret guilt but most i hate when one found out in guilt will seek to gloze and brave it to the end antigone and dost thou seek aught else beyond my death creon naught else for me that gaining i gain all antigone why then delay of all thy words not one pleases me now and may it never please and so all mine must grate upon thine ears and yet how could i higher glory gain than placing my true brother in his tomb there is not one of these but would confess it pleases them did fear not seal their lips the tyrant's might in much besides excels and it may do and say whate'er it will creon of all the race of cadmos thou alone look'st thus upon the deed antigone they see it too as i do but their tongue is tied for thee creon art not ashamed against their thoughts to think antigone there is naught base in honouring our own blood creon and was he not thy kin who fought against him antigone yea brother of one father and one mother creon why then give honour which dishonours him antigone the dead below will not repeat thy words creon yes if thou give like honour to the godless antigone it was his brother not his slave that died creon wasting this land while he died fighting for it antigone yet hades still craves equal rights for all creon the good craves not the portion of the bad antigone who knows if this be wholly deemed below creon not even when he dies can foe be friend antigone my nature leads to sharing love not hate creon go then below and if thou must have love love them while i live women shall not rule enter ismene led in by attendants chorus and lo ismene at the gate comes shedding tears of sisterly regard and o'er her brow a gathering cloud mars the deep roseate blush bedewing her fair cheek creon to ismene and thou who creeping as a viper creeps didst drain my life in secret and i knew not that i was rearing two accursed ones subverters of my throne come tell me then wilt thou confess thou took'st thy part in this or wilt thou swear thou didst not know of it ismene i did the deed if she did go with her yes share the guilt and bear an equal blame antigone nay justice will not suffer this for thou didst not consent nor did i let thee join ismene nay in thy troubles i am not ashamed in the same boat with thee to share thy fate antigone who did it hades knows and those below i do not love a friend who loves in words ismene do not my sister put me to such shame as not to let me join in death with thee and so to pay due reverence to the dead antigone share not my death nor make thine own this deed thou hadst no hand in it my death shall suffice ismene what life to me is sweet bereaved of thee antigone ask creon there since thou o'er him dost watch ismene why vex me so in nothing bettered by it antigone tis pain indeed to laugh my laugh at thee ismene but now at least how may i profit thee antigone save thou thyself i grudge not thy escape ismene ah woe is me and must i miss thy fate antigone thou mead'st thy choice to live and i to die ismene twas not because i failed to speak my thoughts antigone to these didst thou to those did i seem wise ismene and yet the offence is equal in us both antigone take courage thou dost live my soul long since hath died to render service to the dead creon of these two girls the one goes mad but now the other ever since her life began ismene 
even so o king no mind that ever lives stands firm in evil days but goes astray creon thine did when with the vile vile deeds thou choosest ismene how could i live without her presence here creon speak not of presence she is here no more ismene and wilt thou slay thy son's betrothed bride creon full many a field there is which he may plough ismene none like that plighted troth twixt him and her creon wives that are vile i love not for my sons ismene o oh, dearest hymon how thy father shames thee creon thou with that marriage dost but vex my soul chorus and wilt thou rob thy son of her he loved creon tis death not i shall break the marriage off chorus her doom is fixed it seems then she must die creon fixed yes by me and thee no more delay lead them within ye slaves these must be kept henceforth as women suffered not to roam for even boldest natures shrink in fear when they see hades overshadowing life exeunt guards with antigone and ismene strophe one chorus blessed are those whose life no woe doth taste for unto those whose house the gods have shaken nothing fails of curse or woe that creeps to generations far e'en thus a wave wind spreads with blast from thracian coasts the darkness of the deep up from the sea's abyss hither and thither rolls the black sand on and every jutting peak swept by the storm wind's strength lashed by the fierce wild waves re-echoes with the far resounding roar antistrophe one i see the woes that smote in ancient days the seed of labdacos who perished long ago with grief on grief still falling nor does this age rescue that some god still smites it down nor have they any end for now there rose a gleam over the last weak shoots that sprang from out the race of oedipus yet this the blood-stained scythe of those that reign below cuts off relentlessly and maddened speech and frenzied rage of heart strophe two thy power o zeus what haughtiness of man yea what can hold in check which neither sleep that maketh all things old nor the long months of gods that never fail can for a moment cease but still as lord supreme waxing not old with time thou dwellest in thy sheen of radiancy on far olympus height through future near or far as through the past one law holds ever good naught comes to life of man unscathed throughout by woe antistrophe two for hope to many comes in wanderings wild a solace and support to many as a cheat of fond desires and creepeth still on him who knows it not until he burn his foot within the scorching flame full well spake one of old that evil ever seems to be as good to those whose thoughts of heart god leadeth unto woe and without woe he spends but short a space of time and here comes hymon last of all thy sons comes he bewailing sore the fate of her who should have been his bride the maid antigone grieving o'er vanished joys enter hymon creon soon we shall know much more than seers can surely thou dost not come my son to rage against thy father hearing his decree fixing her doom who should have been thy bride or dost thou love us still whate'er we do hymon my father i am thine and thou dost guide with thy wise counsels which i gladly follow no marriage weighs one moment in the scales with me while thou dost guide my steps aright creon this thought my son should dwell within thy breast that all things stand below a father's will for so men pray that they may rear and keep obedient offspring by their hearths and homes that they may both requite their father's foes and pay with him like honours to his friend but he who reareth sons that profit not what could one say of him but this that he breeds his own sorrow laughter to his foes lose not thy reason then my son or come by pleasure for a woman's sake but no a cold embrace is that to have at home a worthless wife the partner of thy bed what ulcerous sore is worse than one we love who proves all worthless no with loathing scorn as hateful to thee 
let that girl go wed a spouse in hades taken in the act i found her her alone of all the state rebellious and i will not make myself false to the state she dies so let her call on zeus the lord of kindred if i rear of mine own stock things foul and orderless i shall have work enough with those without for he who in the life of home is good will still be seen as just in things of state i should be sure that man would govern well and know well to be governed and would stand in war's wild storm on his appointed post a just and good defender but the man who by transgressions violates the laws or thinks to bid the powers that be obey he must not hope to gather praise from me no we must follow whom the state appoints in things or just and trivial or may be the opposite of these for anarchy is our worst evil brings our commonwealth to utter ruin lays whole houses low in battle strife hurls firm allies in flight but they who yield to guidance these shall find obedience saves most men thus help should come to what our rulers order least of all ought men to bow before a woman's sway far better if it must be so to fall by a man's hand than thus to bear reproach by woman conquered chorus unto us o king unless our years have robbed us of our wit thou seemest to say wisely what thou sayest hymon the gods my father have bestowed on man his reason noblest of all earthly gifts and that thou speakest wrongly these thy words i cannot say god grant i ne'er know how such things to utter yet another's thoughts may have some reason tis my lot to watch what each man says or does or blames in thee for dread thy face to one of low estate who speaks what thou wilt not rejoice to hear but i can hear the things in darkness said how the whole city wails this maiden's fate as one who of all women most unjustly for noblest deed must die the foulest death who her own brother fallen in the fray would neither leave unburied nor expose to carrion dogs or any bird of prey may she not claim the meed of golden praise such is the whisper that in secret runs all darkling and for me my father naught is dearer than thy welfare what can be a nobler prize of honour for the son than a sire's glory or for sire than sons i pray thee then wear not one mood alone that what thou sayest is right and naught but that for he who thinks that he alone is wise his mind and speech above what others have such men when searched are mostly empty found but for a man to learn though he be wise yea to learn much and know the time to yield brings no disgrace when winter floods the streams thou seest the trees that bend before the storm save their last twigs while those that will not yield perish with root and branch and when one hauls too tight the mainsail rope and will not slack he has to end his voyage with deck o'erturned do thou then yield permit thyself to change young though i be if any prudent thought be with me i at least will dare assert the higher worth of one who come what will is full of knowledge if that may not be for nature is not wont to take that bent tis good to learn from those who counsel well chorus my king tis fit that thou shouldst learn from him if he speaks words in season and in turn that thou to hymon shouldst learn of him for both speak well creon shall we at our age stoop to learn from him young as he is the lesson to be wise hymon learn not thou shouldst not learn and if i'm young thou shouldst my deeds and not my years consider creon is that thy deed to reverence rebel souls hymon i would bid none waste reverence on the base creon has not that girl been seized with that disease hymon the men of thebes with one accord say no creon and will my subjects tell us how to rule hymon dost thou not see thou speakest like a boy creon must i then rule for others than myself hymon that is no state which hangs on one man's will creon is not the state deemed his who governs it hymon brave rule alone and o'er an empty land creon this boy it seems will be his bride's ally hymon if thou art she for thou art all my care creon basest of base against thy father pleading hymon 
yea for i see thee sin a grievous sin creon and do i sin revering mine own sway hymon thou show'st no reverence trampling on god's laws creon o guilty soul by woman's craft beguiled hymon thou wilt not find me slave unto the base creon thy every word is still on her behalf hymon yea and on thine and mine and theirs below creon be sure thou shalt not wed her while she lives hymon then she must die and dying others slay creon and dost thou dare to come to me with threats hymon is it a threat against vain thoughts to speak creon thou to thy cost shalt teach me wisdom's ways thyself in wisdom wanting hymon i would say thou wast unwise if thou wert not my father creon thou woman slave i say prate on no more hymon wilt thou then speak and speaking listen not creon nay by olympus thou shalt not go free to flout me with reproaches lead her out whom my soul hates that she may die forthwith before mine eyes and near her bridegroom here hymon no think it not near me she shall not die and thou shalt never see my face alive that thou mayst storm at those who like to yield exit hymon chorus the man has gone o king in hasty mood a mind distressed in youth is hard to bear creon let him do what he will and bear himself as more than man he shall not save those girls chorus what dost thou mean to slay them both alike creon not her who touched it not there thou sayst well chorus what form of death meanst thou to slay her with creon leading her on to where the desert path is loneliest there alive in rocky cave will i immure her just so much of food before her set as may avert pollution and save the city from the guilt of blood and there invoking hades whom alone of all the gods she worships she perchance shall gain escape from death or then shall know that hades worship is but labour lost strophe chorus o love in every battle victor owned love rushing on thy prey now on a maiden's soft and blooming cheek in secret ambush hid now o'er the broad sea wandering at will and now in shepherd's folds of all the undying ones none scape from thee nor yet of mortal men whose lives are measured as a fleeting day and who has thee is frenzied in his soul antistrophe thou makest vile the purpose of the just to his own fatal harm thou hast stirred up this fierce and deadly strife of men of nearest kin the charm of eyes of bride beloved and fair is crowned with victory and dwells on high among the powers that rule equal with holiest laws for aphrodite she whom none subdues sports in her might and majesty divine i even i am born beyond the appointed laws i look on this and cannot stay the fountain of my tears for lo i see her see antigone wend her sad lonely way to that bride chamber where we all must lie antigone behold o men of this my fatherland i wend my last lone way seeing the last sunbeam now and never more he leads me yet alive hades that welcomes all to acheron's dark shore with neither part nor lot in marriage festival nor hath the marriage hymn been sung for me as bride but i shall be the bride of acheron chorus and hast thou not all honour worthiest praise who goest to the home that hides the dead not smitten by the sickness that decays nor by the sharp sword's mead but of thine own free will in fullest life alone of mortals thus to hades takes thy way antigone i heard of old her pitiable end on Sipolis high crag the phrygian stranger from a far land come whom tantalus begat whom growth of rugged rock clinging as ivy clings subdued and made its own and now so runs the tale there as she melts in shower the snow abideth a and still bedews yon cliffs that lie below those brows that ever weep with fate like hers god brings me to my rest chorus a goddess she and of the high gods born and we are mortals born of mortal seed and lo 
for one who liveth but to die to gain like doom with those of heavenly race is great and strange to hear antigone ye mock me then alas why wait ye not by all our father's gods i ask of you till i have passed away but flout me while i live o city that i love o men that claim as yours that city stored with wealth o dirce fairest fount o grove of thebes that boasts her chariot host i bid you witness all how with no friends to weep by what stern laws condemned i go to that strong dungeon of the tomb for burial strange ah me nor dwelling with the living nor the dead chorus forward and forward still to farthest verge of daring hast thou gone and now o child thou hast rushed violently where right erects her throne surely thou payest to the uttermost thy father's debt of guilt antigone ah thou hast touched the quick of all my grief the thrice told tale of all my father's woe the fate which dogs us all the old lobdaked race of ancient fame woe for the curses dire of that defiled bed with foulest incest stained my mother's with my sire whence i myself have sprung most miserable and now i go to them to sojourn in the grave accursed and unwed ah brother thou didst find thy marriage fraught with ill and thou though dead hast smitten down my life chorus acts reverent and devout may claim devotion's name but power in one to whom power comes as trust may never be defied and thee thy stubborn mood self-chosen layeth low antigone unwept without a friend unwed and whelmed in woe i journey on this road that open lies no more shall it be mine o misery to look upon yon daylight's holy eye and yet of all my friends not one bewails my fate no kindly tear is shed enter creon End of part two. Recording by Expatriate in Bangor, Maine. Part three of Antigone by Sophocles. Translated by Edward Hayes Plumptree, 1821 to 1891. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Expatriate in Bangor, Maine. Part three. Creon and know ye not if men have leave to speak their songs and wailings thus to stave off death that they will never stop lead lead her on without delay and as i have said immure in yon cavernous tomb and then depart leave her to choose or drear in lonely death or living in the tomb to find her home our hands are clean in all that touches her but she no more shall dwell on earth with us antigone turning towards the covers o tomb my bridal chamber vaulted home guarded right well for ever where i go to join mine own of whom the greater part among the dead doth persephassa hold and i of all the last and saddest wend my way below life's little span unfilled and yet i go and feed myself with hopes that i shall meet them by my father loved dear to my mother well beloved of thee thou darling brother i with these my hands washed each dear corpse arrayed you poured libations and rites of burial and in care for thee thy body polynices honouring i gained this recompense and yet in sight of all that rightly judged the deed was good i had not done it had i come to be a mother with her children had not dared though twere a husband dead that mouldered there against my country's will to bear this toil and am i asked what law constrain me thus i answer had i lost a husband dear i might have had another other sons by other spouse if one were lost to me but when my father and my mother sleep in hades then no brother more can come and therefore giving thee the foremost place i seemed in creon's eyes o brother dear to sin in boldest daring therefore now he leads me having taken me by force cut off from marriage bed and marriage song untasting wife's true joy or mother's bliss with infant at her breast but all forlorn bereaved of friends in utter misery alive i tread the chambers of the dead what law of heaven have i transgressed against what use for me ill-starred one still to look to any god for succour or to call on any friend for aid 
for a holiest deed i bear this charge of rank unholiness if acts like these the gods on high approve we taught by pain shall own that we have sinned but if these sin looking at creon i pray they suffer not worse evils than the wrongs they do to me chorus still do the same wild blasts vex her who standeth there creon therefore shall these her guards weep sore for this delay chorus ah me this word of thine tells of death drawing nigh creon i cannot bid thee hope for other end than this antigone o citadel of thebes my native land ye gods of ancient days i go and linger not behold me o ye senators of thebes the last lone scion of the kingly race what things i suffer and from whom they come revering still the laws of reverence guards lead antigone away strophe one chorus so did the form of danai bear of old in brazen palace hid to lose the light of heaven and in her tomb-like chamber was enclosed yet she o child was noble in her race and well she stored the golden shower of zeus but great and dread the might of destiny nor kingly wealth nor war nor tower nor dark-hulled ships beaten by waves escape antistrophe so too was shut and closed in dungeon cave bitter and fierce in mood the son of drias king of yon edonian tribes for vile reproach by dionysus hands and so his strength and soul o'er mad waste drop by drop away and so he learnt that he against the god spake his mad words of scorn for he the menad throng in bright fire fain had stopped and roused the muse's wrath strophe two and by the double sea of those dark rocks are shores of bosporus and thracian isle as salmidesos known where ares whom they serve god of the region round saw the dire blinding wound that smote the twin-born sons of phineus by relentless stepdame's hand dark wound on dark doomed eyes not with the stroke of sword but blood-stained hands and point of spindle sharp antistrophe two and they in misery miserable fate wasting away wept sore born of a mother wedded with a curse and she who claimed descent from men of ancient fame the old erechthide race amid her father's winds daughter of boreas in far distant caves was reared a child of gods swift moving as the steed o'er lofty crag and yet the ever-living fates bore hard on her enter tiresias guided by a boy tiresias princes of thebes we come as travellers joined one seeing for both for still the blind must use a guide's assistance to direct his steps creon and what new thing tiresias brings thee here tiresias i'll tell thee and do thou the seer obey creon of old i was not wont to slight thy thoughts tiresias so didst thou steer our city's course full well creon i bear my witness from good profit gained tiresias know then thou walkst on fortune's razor edge creon what means this how i shudder at thy speech tiresias soon shalt thou know as thou dost hear the signs of my dread art for sitting as of old upon my ancient seat of augury where every bird finds haven lo i hear strange cry of winged creatures shouting shrill with inarticulate passion and i knew that they were tearing each the other's flesh with bloody talons for their whirring wings made that quite clear and straightway i in fear made trial of the sacrifice that lay on fiery altar and hephaestus flame shone not from out the offering but there oozed upon the ashes trickling from the bones a moisture and it smouldered and it spat and lo the gall was scattered to the air and forth from out the fat that wrapped them round the thigh bones fell such omens of decay from holy sacrifice i learnt from him this boy who now stands here for he is still a guide to me as i to others am and all this evil falls upon the state from out thy counsels for our altars all our sacred hearths are full of food for dogs and birds unclean 
the flesh of that poor wretch who fell the son of oedipus and so the gods no more hear prayers of sacrifice nor own the flame that burns the victim's limbs nor do the birds give cry of omen good but feed on carrion of a slaughtered corpse thinks thou on this my son to err indeed is common unto all but having erred he is no longer reckless or unblessed who having fallen into evil seeks for healing nor continues still unmoved self-will must bear the charge of stubbornness yield to the dead and outrage not a corpse what prowess is it fallen foes to slay good counsel give i planning good for thee and of all joys the sweetest is to learn from one who speaketh well should that bring gain creon old men as archers aiming at their mark so ye shoot forth your venom darts at me i know your augur's tricks and by your tribe long since am tricked and sold yes gain your gains get sardis amber metal indian gold that corpse ye shall not hide in any tomb not though the eagles birds of zeus should bear their carrion morsels to the throne of god not even fearing this pollution dire will i consent to burial well i know that man is powerless to pollute the gods but many fall tiresias dotard old a shameful fall who glows their shameful words for lucre's sake with surface show of good tiresias ah me does no man know does none consider creon consider what what trite poor saw comes now tiresias how far good counsel is of all things best creon so far i trow as folly is worst ill tiresias of that disease thy soul alas is full creon i will not meet a seer with evil words tiresias thou dost so saying i divine with lies creon the race of seers is ever fond of gold tiresias and that of tyrants still loves lucre foul creon dost know thou speak'st thy words of those that rule tiresias i know through me thou rulest a city saved creon wise seer art thou yet given over much to wrong tiresias thou stir me to speak out my soul's dread secrets creon out with them only speak them not for gain tiresias so is it i trow in all that touches thee creon know that thou shalt not bargain with my will tiresias know then and know it well that thou shalt see not many winding circuits of the sun before thou givest as quittance for the dead a corpse by thee begotten for that thou hast to the ground cast one that walked on earth and foully placed within a sepulchre a living soul and now thou keep'st from them the gods below the corpse of one unblessed unwept unhallowed and in these things thou canst claim no part nor yet the gods above but they by thee are outraged and they wait the sure though slow avengers of the grave the dread erinnes of the mighty gods for thee in these same evils to be snared search well if i say this as one who sells his soul for money yet a little while and in thy house the wail of men and women shall make it plain and every city stirs itself in arms against thee owning those whose limbs the dogs have buried or fierce wolves or winged birds have brought the accursed taint to region consecrate doom like to this sure darting as an arrow to its mark i launch at thee for thou dost vex me sore an archer aiming at the very heart and thou shalt not escape his fiery sting and now o oh boy lead thou me home again that he may vent his spleen on younger men and learn to keep his tongue more orderly with better thoughts than this his present mood exit chorus the man has gone o king predicting woe and well we know since first our raven hair was mixed with grey that never yet his words were uttered to our state and failed of truth creon i know it too tis that that troubles me to yield is hard but holding out to smite one soul with sorrow this is harder still chorus we need wise counsel o Menikius's son creon what shall i do speak thou and i'll obey chorus go then and free the maiden from her tomb and give a grave to him who lies exposed creon 
is this thy counsel dost thou bid me yield chorus without delay o king for lo they come the gods swift-footed ministers of ill and in an instant lay the self-willed low creon ah me tis hard and yet i bend my will to do thy bidding with necessity we must not fight at such o'erwhelming odds chorus go then and act commit it not to others creon e'en as i am i'll go come come my men present or absent come and in your hands bring axes come to yonder eminence and i since now my judgment leans that way who myself bound her now myself will loose too much i fear lest it should wisest prove maintaining ancient laws to end my life exit strophe i chorus o thou of many names of that cadmean maid the glory and the joy whom zeus as offspring owns zeus thundering deep and loud who watchest over famed italia and reignst over all the bays that deo claims on fair eleusis coast bacchus who dwellst in thebes the mother town of all thy bacchant train among ismena's stream and with the dragon's brood antistrophe one thee o'er the double peak of yonder height the blaze of flashing fire beholds where nymphs of Coricos go forth in bacchic dance and by the flowery stream of castaly and thee the ivied slopes of nice's hills and vine-clad promontory while words of more than mortal melody shout out the well-known name send forth the guardian lord of the wide streets of thebes strophe two above all cities thou with her thy mother whom the thunder slew dost look on it with love and now since all the city bendeth low beneath the sullen plague come thou with cleansing tread o'er the parnassian slopes or o'er the moaning straits antistrophe two o thou who leads the band the choral band of stars still breathing fire lord of the hymns of night the child of highest zeus appear o king with thyian maidens wild who all night long in dance with frenzied chorus sing thy praise their lord iacchus enter messenger messenger ye men of cadmus and amphion's house i know no life of mortal man which i would either praise or blame tis fortune's chance that raiseth up and fortune bringeth low the man who lives in good or evil plight and profit of men's future there is none for creon so i deem deserved to be at once admired and envied having saved this land of cadmus from the hands of foes and having ruled with fullest sovereignty he lived and prospered joyous in a race of goodly offspring now all this is gone for when men lose the joys that sweeten life i cannot deem they live but rather count as if a breathing corpse his heaped-up stores of wealth are large so be it and he lives with all a sovereign state and yet if joy be absent all the rest i count as naught and would not weigh them against pleasure's charm more than a vapour's shadow chorus what is this what new disaster tellst thou of our chiefs messenger dead are they and the living cause their death chorus who slays and who is slaughtered tell thy tale messenger hymon is dead slain weltering in his blood chorus by his own act or by his father's hand messenger his own in wrath against his father's crime chorus o prophet true most true those words of thine messenger since things stand thus we well may counsel take chorus lo creon's wife comes sad eurydice she from the house approaches hearing speech about her son or else by accident enter eurydice eurydice i on my way my friends as suppliant bound to pay my vows at palace shrine have heard your words and so i chance to draw the bolt of the half-open door when lo a sound falls on my ears of evil striking home and terror struck i fall in deadly swoon back in my handmaid's arms yet tell it me tell the tale once again for i shall hear by long experience discipline to grief messenger dear lady i will tell thee i was by and will not leave one word of truth untold 
why should we smooth and glose where all too soon we should be found as liars truth is still the only safety lo i went with him thy husband in attendance to the edge of yonder plain where still all ruthlessly the corpse of polynices lay exposed mangled by dogs and having prayed to her the goddess of all pathways and to pluto to temper wrath with pity him they washed with holy washing and what yet was left we burnt in branches freshly cut and heaped a high raised grave from out his native soil and then we entered on the stone-paved home death's marriage chamber for the ill-starred maid and some one hears while standing yet afar shrill voice of wailing near the bridal bower by funeral rites unhallowed and he comes and tells my master creon on his ears advancing nearer falls a shriek confused of bitter sorrow and with groaning loud he utters one sad cry me miserable and am i then a prophet do i wend this day the dreariest way of all my life my son's voice greets me go my servants go quickly draw near and standing by the tomb search ye and see and where the stone torn out shall make an opening look ye in and say if i hear hymon's voice or if my soul is cheated by the gods and then we searched as he our master in his frenzy bade us and in the furthest corner of the vault we saw her hanging by her neck with cord of linen threads entwined and him we found clasping her form in passionate embrace and mourning o'er the doom that robbed him of her his father's deed and that his marriage bed so full of woe when creon saw him there groaning aloud in bitterness of heart he goes to him and calls in wailing voice poor boy what hast thou done hast thou then lost thy reason in what evil sinkest thou come forth my child on bended knee i ask thee and then the boy with fierce wild gleaming eyes glared at him spat upon his face and draws still answering not the sharp two-handled sword missing his aim his father from the blow turning aside in anger with himself the poor ill-doomed one even as he was fell on his sword and drove it through his breast full half its length and clasping yet alive the maiden's arm still soft he there breathes out in broken gasps upon her fair white cheek swift stream of bloody shower so they lie dead bridegroom with dead bride and he has gained poor boy his marriage rites in hades home and left to all men witness terrible the man's worst ill is want of counsel wise exit eurydice chorus what dost thou make of this she turneth back before one word or good or ill she speaks messenger i too am full of wonder yet with hopes i feed myself she will not think it meet hearing her son's woes openly to wail out in the town but to her handmaids there will give command to wail her woe at home too trained a judgment has she so to err chorus i know not to my mind or silence hard or vain wild cries are signs of bitter woe messenger soon we shall know within the house advancing if in the passion of her heart she hides a secret purpose truly dost thou speak there is a terror in that silence hard chorus seeing creon approaching with the corpse of hymon in his arms and lo the king himself is drawing nigh and in his hands he bears a record clear no woe if i may speak by others caused himself the great offender enter creon bearing hymon's body creon woe for the sins of souls of evil mood stern mighty to destroy o ye who look on those of kindred race the slayers and the slain woe for mine own rash plans that prosper not woe for thee son but new in life's career and by a new fate dying woe woe thou diest thou art gone not by thine evil counsel but by mine chorus ah me too late thou seemst to see the right creon ah me i learn the grievous lesson on my head god pressing sore hath smitten me and vexed in ways most rough and terrible ah me shattering my joy is trampled under foot woe woe man's labours are but labour lost 
enter second messenger second messenger my master thou as one who hast full store one source of sorrow bearest in thine arms and others in thy house too soon it seems thou needst must come and see creon and what remains worse evil than the evils that we bear second messenger thy wife is dead that corpse's mother true ill-starred one smitten with a blow just dealt creon o oh, agony haven of death that none may pacify why dost thou thus destroy me turning to messenger o oh, thou who comest bringing in thy train woes horrible to tell thou tramplest on a man already slain what sayst thou what new tidings brings to me ah me ah me is it that now there waits in store for me my own wife's death to crown my misery chorus full clearly thou mayst see no longer now dost yon recess conceal her the gates open and show the dead body of eurydice creon woe is me this second ill i gaze on miserable what fate yea what still lies in wait for me here in my arms i bear what was my son and there o oh misery look upon the dead ah wretched mother ah my son my son second messenger in frenzy wild she round the altar clung and closed her darkening eyelids and bewailed the noble fate of magarius who died long since and then again that corpse thou hast and last of all she cried a bitter cry against thy deeds the murderer of thy sons creon woe woe alas i shudder in my fear will no one strike a deadly blow with sharp two-edged sword fearful my fate alas and with a fearful woe full sore beset second messenger she in her death charged thee with being the cause of all their sorrows these and those of old creon and in what way struck she the murderous blow second messenger with her own hand below her heart she stabbed hearing her son's most pitiable fate creon ah me the fault is mine on no one else of all that live the fearful guilt can come i even i did slay thee woe is me i yes i speak the truth lead me ye guards lead me forth quickly lead me out of sight more crushed to nothing than is nothing's self chorus thou counsellest gain if gain there be in ills for present ills when shortest then are best creon o oh, come thou then come thou the last of all my dooms that brings to me best boon my life's last day come then o oh, come that never more i look upon the light chorus these things are in the future what is near that we must do or what is yet to come they watch to whom that work of right belongs creon i did but pray for what i most desire chorus pray thou for nothing then for mortal man there is no issue from a doom decreed creon looking at the two corpses lead me then forth vain shadow that i am who slew thee o my son unwillingly and thee too o my sorrow and i know not which way to look or turn all near at hand is turned to evil and upon my head there falls a doom far worse than i can bear chorus man's highest blessedness in wisdom chiefly stands and in the things that touch upon the gods tis best in word or deed to shun unholy pride great words of boasting bring great punishments and so to grey-haired age teach wisdom at the last End of part three. Recording by expatriate in Bangor, Maine. End of Antigone by Sophocles. Translated by Edward Hayes Plumptree, 1821 to 1891.